Hi, for this video what I want to do is show you how to create a histogram and a frequency distribution using the TI-84 graphing calculator. Um, this particular one is going to have six classes. Um, the textbook that I currently teach from does tell how many classes that you are going to have. In the real world, you would decide how many classes you want to use, and you may also use different techniques. Um, but the technique that I am giving will ensure that you get the same um, answer as everyone else in the class and set it up with the exact same class width as everyone else. All right, so the first thing that we want to do to start is we want to find our class width. And to do that, we need the maximum value minus the minimum value divided by our number of classes. So with this one, what we end up doing is our maximum value, if we scan through all of this, happens to be 75. So we would do 75 minus our minimum value happens to be 52. So remember, max is just the highest, min is the lowest. I will show you how to find both of those in the graphing calculator in just a minute. So if you have trouble finding it or you can't scan quickly, I will show you that the graphing calculator will also help you find the max and the min. Um, the number of classes we want is 6, so if I simplify this, this gives me 23 divided by 6, which is approximately 3.83, and no matter what, we always round up, even if it's a whole number, we do round up, um, so our class width that we would use would be 4, so even if it was 3 exactly, we would round up to 4, um, if it was 3.05, we would round up to 4, and the reason for that is is if you don't round up, you will miss your maximum value. It will not be contained in your analysis. Okay, um, so the class part, I'm going to go ahead and just fill out before going into the calculator, and then I'm going to use this information later to help us find the frequency so we don't have to go through individually and count our values. So we're always going to start at our minimum, which is 52, and then I'm going to add the class width to go to the next number. So this one would be 56, 60, 64, 68, and 72. The other class upper limit, so this is going to be our lower limit, and I know you can't see that color very well. Let me change colors. So our lower limit, we always start at the minimum. Our upper limit is always going to be one less than our next lower limit. So um, if I subtract one from here, I would get 55. And then I can either subtract one again and do 59, or I can add the four each time here. So this next one would be 63, 67, 71. And then again, um, the distance between each of these limits are going to be the same throughout. They're all gonna be four. So I would just add four and I would end at 75. Okay, so it's important that you know how to find the class limits. We always, like I said, just start at the minimum. Then we add our class width to go to the next lower class limit. The upper class limit is always one less than the next lower class limit. You don't want any overlap. Um, if you do have decimals, basically another way you could think of this is this is 52 everything up to um, all values less than 56, but not including it. So you could treat it that way. And that's what your calculator will do. So that's what I tend to do. All right, so now instead of having to go through and count individually how many fall between 52 and 55, I'm gonna use my calculator to help me. Okay, so let me grab my calculator and I'm already in the screen. I already entered the data beforehand so you didn't have to see me type it all in, but let me show you how I got there. So when you get your calculator, the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna hit your stat button and edit allows you to edit your spreadsheet list. The sort A is sort ascending, the sort D is sort descending. So if you wanna get a list in order from smallest to largest or largest to smallest, you can use these two values. Um, the clear list, this is one option that you can do to clear a list, but there's a different way. And then number five, the setup editor is super important because if you accidentally delete a list, um, you can get it back by hitting this. So let me just show you how that would work. If I go into stat and edit, choose option one, 
I hit enter or you can hit the number one to get here. Um, if I go up here and I clear it, I'm not going to do that because that would erase all of my data. Um, but just show you if I have some data over here, let's say that I had nine and six. So if I came into my calculator, I was borrowing a friend's calculator and they already had a bunch of data typed in there and you don't want to delete it all. Um, you can get up to where the box, the L2 is highlighted and hit clear and enter and it will get rid of everything. If you accidentally hit delete, it actually deletes the list. And so notice I go from L1 to L5. That's where that setup editor will come into play. If I hit five and enter, the next time I go back in there, my lists are all back. So I just wanted to show you that because it's really important. I know that's extra information that you don't need. Okay, um, but I did already type in all 24 values, so they are in here. Um, I did want to show you really quickly before I get into the histogram um, where you can find your um, max and min. So if I go back to the calculator screen, second quit will get you out of anything. If you notice above mode, it says quit. That'll get you out of the spreadsheet screen. So if you hit second and stat above it, it says list. Um, this tells you all the lists that you have named. There are operations that you can do. I'm not going to cover a lot of those, but under math, you can see that option one will give you your minimum and option two will give you your maximum. I'm just going to do one of them. You would do the same thing for both. So after you got there, again, that was second stack, go to math. Um, so if I go to number two, the maximum, I have to tell it what list I want to look at. And so the only list that I have is L1. So if you hit second and the number one, you can see that there's a blue L1 above it. And you hit enter and we can see that the maximum was 75 like we found. So um, you can find both the minimum and maximum that way. All right, so next step, we want to create the histogram in our calculator to help us figure out how many fall in each of those classes. Okay, so in order to do that, um, we are going to hit second and the y equals above its stat plot. Just as a general rule of thumb, if you run into issues when you are dealing with stat plot, if you get an error, I advise checking this screen because if you have something mistyped in here, like if I have six in comma and I try to graph something, it's going to give me an error because of syntax. So if you ever run into that and you're graphing something, just check to see if you have something in this screen um, because a lot of times that's where your error will occur. So I verified that I don't have anything in here that's going to mess me up. So now I'm going to hit second and the Y equals button. Above it again, it says stat plot. And I'm going to go to plot one and I'm going to turn on plot one. The type, the first one is a scatter plot. This is a time series plot. Um, histogram, that's what we want to create. So I'm going to select that one. The X list is where did you put your data? So if you were working in L2, I would just hit second and the number two to change it to L2. Um, but because of the fact that we had our information in L1, we do want it to be L1. So wherever you put your information, that is the list that you want to have. If you have a frequency list, you can change this. Right now our frequency, each of those values just occur one time. So my frequency is one. Sometimes you want to graph things with a frequency list and so you would just change this value. So if I hit graph after doing that, notice nothing shows up. And that's because all of our data values were really large and my default window is from negative 10 to positive 10, so it's not showing anything up. There is a really nice feature in your calculator that if you hit zoom and nine, it will automatically come up with a histogram that they think is the best thing. And in the real world, this would be an acceptable histogram. Like you can see the general shape and all of that, but it's not going to necessarily match up with what your homework platform wants. So we have to tell it where we want it to go. And so that's where we're going to utilize that information that we had. So if I go back here, remember that we started at our minimum value. So that is important. The other thing that was important is that we want a class width of positive four. So what we can do is we can go into our window screen and we want our X min to start at our minimum value. So um, our minimum value is 52. So we're already starting there. Our X max just has to be any number that is larger than your maximum value. So since our maximum value was 75, I'm just going to make this nicer and just change it to 78. The X scale is where your class width goes. So if you remember, we did 23 divided by six. This is the 
23 divided by 6. So it was trying to do six classes, but it didn't round to use a whole number. So it's counting by 3.833, all of the little tick marks. So we're going to just change that to 4. The Y minimum is your lowest Y value. I typically use a negative value. Um, make sure you hit the negative button and not the subtraction button because it will cause problems. Um, the Y max, you don't know for sure what your maximum value is, so you may just want to go to 12 or something. Sometimes you'll have to come back and adjust this. This would just be your highest frequency. So um, as long as you can see your top of your graph, then you are good with your max. Um, the Y scale is just what you're counting by and the rest of it don't worry about because different calculators may have different numbers here so don't worry about this part down here. So now if we go back into our graph we now have it lined up where it's perfectly counting by 4. So if I hit trace we can see that this one is 52 to everything less than 56. So if you notice we had 52 to everything less than 56. This one was 56 to everything less than 60. Um, so that's how your calculator will portray it. So if you notice this one says 56 to 60, 60 to 6 to less than 64, so this is really 60 to 63, etc. Okay, the other nice thing about this trace feature is it tells you how many are in there. So that's your frequency. So there is one between 52 and 55. There are zero between 56 and 59. Between 60 and 63 we have six. Between 64 and 67, we have 9. Between 68 and 71, we have 6. And then we have 2. So that's what we would put in here for these values. We would just say our frequencies are 1, 0, 6, 9, 6, and 2. And then once you have this done, you can easily go and draw your graph. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, put that on paper, because a lot of times you have to be able to take it from the calculator and put it down here. Um, remember that whenever you're creating a graphic, you want to make sure you label the axes. So this would be the retirement age. Of professors. So somewhere on there, you need the context of what you're looking for. This axis is going to be our frequency. And then when you're labeling it, I just start with the lower limit. There's a lot of different um, variations on this. You could use midpoint. You could do um, your lower limit. So I could just go through, and I'm going to not start at 0 here. So I'm just going to draw a break. And I'm going to go 52, 56, 60. 64, 68, 72, and then I'm going to go ahead and go one more and put 76, um, just so I have an ending place. Okay, over here, my frequency, my highest one is 9, so I'm just going to count by 2s, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. It doesn't matter what you count by here as long as your highest value is set up. This does have to have an equal scale, so I couldn't just go 1, 2, 6, 9. So there does have to be equal spacing in here, so it's really important that you set up a scale. And then you just go through and you draw your um, bars to match. So from 52 to 56, I just have 1. And then I would shade that in. Okay, the next class there was 0, so I should have a gap in this histogram. The only gaps you should have is if your frequency is zero. If your frequency is not zero, then you should not have any gaps. Um, for the next class, 60 to 63, I would just go up to six. And you can shade it in completely. I'm not gonna take the time to shade it fully in. I'm just gonna kind of roughly shade it in. Um, my next one would go to nine. So notice that I do touch the bars completely. I don't leave any gaps except for where the frequency is zero. So make sure that your bars do touch each other. For the next class, we're back to six. Okay, and then our last one is two. Trying to pick a color I haven't picked yet. So for two, and then we would just fill this in. Okay, if you had to describe the shape of this distribution, um, the shape of this distribution is roughly symmetric. It's slightly skewed to the left just because of the fact that there is a gap here and it is pulled down just a little bit. But really overall, this is a roughly symmetric distribution. 
All right, so I have one more thing that I want to show you how to do. I know this video is getting very long and I should probably have separated this into something else, but I didn't want to have to restart. Um, to find the relative frequency, you can use your calculator to do this for you so that you don't have to individually divide by everything. Um, you can also use your calculator to find the sum of this list. Remember that this symbol right here is sigma and it means sum. So the sum of the frequencies should add up to be the total that you had here. So if I add this together, I get one plus six is seven. Seven plus nine gives me 16. 16 plus six is 22, and this does give me 24. So we can see that we didn't miss any of our professors. They are all represented. And then over here to find the relative frequency, you would just do one divided by the sum of your frequency. Okay, so instead of having to divide all of these numbers by 24 individually, you can use your calculator to do that. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet screen and I'm going to utilize L2 and L3 and all I'm going to do is enter in the frequencies. Okay, and then when I go into L3, I want to divide everything that is in L2 by and make sure that L3 is highlighted that you're not trying to work down here because this won't work if you're working down here. Okay, so I'm going to do L2 divided by. Um, if you already know that the sum is 24, I could just type in the tw number 24. Um, if you don't know the sum of the list, like if you're working with like 60 or 80 or you don't know how many data points there are, you can find the sum of your list using your calculator. So I can go to second list in math and notice that sum is option five. And so I can divide it by the sum of my list of L2. And then when I hit enter, it will automatically give me the decimal places. So I'm just going to round to four decimal places where necessary. So this would be 0.0417. The next one is just zero. The six is nice and concise. It's 0.25. Nine is 0.375. This was 0.25 and 0 0.0833. So I just wrote down all of these numbers that were on my screen. One thing about your relative frequency list is that some of that list should always be one. So you can always check to make sure that you didn't miss any by doing second and list and going to the sum and finding the sum of L3 and seeing that it does add up to be one. So the sum of this list is always one. Okay, so I know this video was quite long, sorry for the length, but I did want to make sure that I was thorough in my explanation. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well. And I hope that this helps you more quickly find your frequencies rather than counting it by hand. 